Okay. Hello, Spoon. We're on episode 67 of the podcast. Hopefully I got that right. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry. I'm tired today. I have lots of work and things like that. But it's almost the end of the week, so I'm okay at this point, I think. Only one more day and probably won't be a completely full day, to be honest. So I get to go get a haircut tomorrow, I think. That's my treat for myself. How are you, uh, Spoon? All right. Just uh, just plugging along with the studying, yep. you know? Not yeah. Not changed. No, I'm with you. I'm with you uh, on that kind of uh, feeling, to be honest. But we get a break. Work slash study break to talk about game news, various topics, and maybe talk about a little bit of games. And also, we get to talk about uh, maybe this guy for a little bit. Mm-hmm. This is my Steam Dick. Um, <laughs> pretty big as you should probably expect. So we, I want to show you exactly like for context, how like the size of this thing, because I don't know if you've actually like seen the dimensions of it in just the actual like um, specs. This thing is massive. It's, it's the biggest handheld console I've ever seen in my life. So maybe I'll just talk about that for like less than five minutes. Just my impression of it so far. But uh, in addition to that, I, there's an added bit of news that I want to put in here, if that's okay. We're going to talk about Diablo Immortal for mm-hmm. a few minutes. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that at the very end. I'll, I'll break it up again. As for introduction, for those of you that are hanging out, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking out the VODs. Thanks for being a part of our little community. Thanks for continuing to support us. And hopefully things will continue and Maybe we can add some new things at some point in the future when both of us feel like we have the time and effort to do so. <laughs> but right now, I think... Which, for me, will not be anytime soon. That is not going to be anytime soon. <laughs> but I'm just merely putting it out there into into the universe. So, I think... It, uh, any other intro thoughts? No, I don't think so. Okay. Then we can jump into the news. Bam. Okay, first item. The old Hearthstone devs, including Ben Brode, who is the face of Hearthstone for many years, announced a new game, mobile card game called Marvel Snap. Now, I don't know 100% how this game is actually played in completion, but the idea is you have a deck of cards, each card is a marvel character there are no spells there are no there's no the mana is not there's no like there's mana but the mana is tied to what turn it is so whatever the turn is that's how much mana you can use okay and you you it's a 1v1 game you play against one opponent so i don't remember how big the size of the the card deck is that you play with, but it 12. can't be that big. It can't be that big. 12 cards. 12 cards. Yeah, because there's there's six turns. You draw yep. three cards to start from what I saw, and you're obviously going to draw six more. So the rest of your deck is like three cards at the end of the game. So very small game compared to any really any other card game that's out there, like big ones that you've probably heard of. Like if you yep. think of Magic the Gathering, normal 60 card deck. Um, Not talking about all the other, you know, game modes, so to speak, in Magic. Uh, Hearthstone's a 30-card deck. Um, A lot of games are somewhere between 30 and 60. This one is 12. And And you're not allowed any any duplicates either. You have to have 12 unique cards. One of each. Yep. One unique card, 12 total. Um, But I... And it's just six turns. And you play those cards into three different lanes. I'm calling them lanes. Mm -hmm. They represent locations. They're lanes, okay? And each lane has rules associated with it for the location. And there's, like, tons of different location options. Really good setup, by the way, for making every game feel different. Really good setup. So... I think let's just stop there for explaining the game. You, we could talk about it all over the place. Like, my my first impression of the game is it's got a lot of potential. 
Card art is unbelievably good. Yep, that's really good. Card art's really good. You can upgrade cards, and you do that just by playing the game. I, I'm i sure there's a microtransaction system somewhere in there where you pay real money. I don't know where it is yet, um, but all the cards have I've, great art. I, I've seen that. I don't know what everything you can get through the microtransaction system, but I know one of the things you can get is card variants. Yeah, card var so card variants are cool. Cool idea. Yeah, Especially so those, for Marvel those comics. Those you can buy with the the premium currency. Yeah, g good idea, though. Like so that's like a, that's a cos that's a cosmetic thing. Yeah. It has no effect on the gameplay at all. Yeah. So again, I, for for comic books, having variants is a good idea. Tons yeah. of variants of various heroes and, and there's villains. a there's yeah. like a, a battle pass or a season pass thing. I'm sure there'll be a premium, like a free and a premium yeah. version. There's of gonna that. be premium, like, yeah. Yeah, like in any uh like in any game yeah. that has a, has a season pass. Um, as far as me, my impressions watching the game, uh, it looks pretty fun. It's very simple, but like anything that starts out simple, the complexity is in starting to understand the tactics and your mm -hmm. strategy and building around your deck. So while the game seems simple to play, you just play cards to lanes, you can develop some really interesting strategies and various tactics from that that's like the best way to do it is start with something super simple and the complexity is trying to to do your your analysis of the cards and, and theory craft that's that's like the best game style so for me at least and the games play like super it looks fun i i i don't know like i've watched it it looks fun i'm interested in it Looks cool. At some point, they need to get a PC release, but very, very cool game. Yeah, I, I think it doesn't, looks like a, a good one. Doesn't seem like they're prioritizing PC very much because they said like, oh, when they do the global release of the mobile version, they're gonna release like a PC. I think they said alpha at the time of the mobile release. So yeah, that's. I think that's okay. I mean, g games like this mo being mobile first, because the game is designed for mobile. Like, just yeah. looking at it, it's diamondable. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. You can emulate it if you want on your computer. No matter. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Spoon, what are your impressions? I, I've, I've said mine. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of with you on this. I've actually been watching streams a bit the, the last couple of days in some of my downtime. And mm. I, think, uh, I think the game looks really fun, actually. It looks really, again, very simple baseline. You know, six-turn game, 12-card deck. The cards all cost between one and six mana, um, and yeah, you play them to one of three lanes, as you said. They call them like locations in the game because they all correspond to a different like Marvel location. Yep. But those locations can drastically change each game and the locations are revealed one at a time on the first three turns. So mm. the leftmost location is revealed on the first turn yep. then the middle on the second term and the right on the third turn um and the game to me is on the strategic side is like deck building is important obviously and having a good like synergistic deck you know i've seen a few different types of decks so far there are um uh there's a couple different types of effects in the game. There's like ongoing effects where the card just has like an ongoing effect after you play it. There's on reveal where it's like when you put the card down and it, and it turns over, it has an effect and it yep. does the thing. And then there's um, what all those like a few other types that uh, I'm thinking of. Yeah, there's ongoing uh, on reveal. There's like there's like there's move like there's things that can move cards between the lanes. Yep. Um, then there's there's like discard effects i saw someone playing a deck yesterday it was like it was a discard deck like they had a lot of mm. cards that were based on or uh, maybe not discard but like destroy like destroy they had cards that like get buffs when they're destroyed basically so you okay. have cards in your deck that i think uh, there's a six drop called like a pot i think it's apocalypse yep it's like a 6-8 to start, but every time it's discarded, it comes back to your hand and is gains 4 attack. Oh, that's so. interesting. That's interesting. So you have to, like, self-discard it. 
you have to tactically yeah. discard it in particular. Yeah. And there's cards like, uh, I think, Carnage, like, takes all of the cards at the location you play it on, destroys them, and then I think adds, like, two to his own power for each card you destroy. So you have a bunch of, like, little things there, and you put yeah. Carnage down, he gets a lot stronger. Yep. Um, yeah, so I saw that type of deck. A popular deck I've seen is, like, it's an on-reveal deck, so a lot of on-reveal on things, you know, they just get buffs from on reveal effects. There's this one card, White Tiger. It's a 5-1, but it uh, spawns a 7 power tiger in one of the other two locations that it uh, yep. that it's in. And then the big drop of that deck is Odin, which is, again, a 6-8. But then uh, in the lane, you put it in all the on reveal effects of the cards that are already in the lane go again. Oh, okay. So yep. he activates them all again. So, like, if you have white, like, if you're turn five and turn six are like white tiger, then Odin, you get white tigers like seven drop in one of the other lanes twice. Yep. So, you know, I've seen some interesting um, decks from what I've seen. Um, yeah, the game's simple, but I think there's a decent amount of strategy. There's also a decent amount of like, trying to read your opponent and like see like oh what do i think you know what lane do right. i think they're they're gonna play in you know right. um sometimes you're like all right i'm just gonna give up on this one lane and focus on the other two or maybe i think my opponent's just gonna hey they're they're giving up on that one so we don't need to worry about it anymore um so yeah and the big mechanic like the main mechanic of the game i don't know who maybe not the main mechanic is but what the game's name after is this they call it snap mm. feature which is basically a double down mechanic at any point in the game you can choose to snap which doubles the reward for the the match um okay basically so the like I, 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 right now the only mode in the game is like it's it's a ranked it's like a ranked ladder mode basically yep um and you gain these uh cubes increase your rank every time you win a match you gain cubes and when you lose a match you lose cubes um and it's based on this kind of like snap mechanic so every match by default starts at one cube yep and it, if the match goes to the end so the it goes through all six turns that doubles and it becomes worth two yep and then you snap and at and any score. and at, and at any point either player can snap so it can be four if one player snaps or eight if both players snap so why would you not always snap what's the downside to snapping and losing because then if you snap and you lose you lose four okay, or so you, you lose two so you're so anteing you up twice. you're, you're anteing yeah, up yep. exactly okay. you're anteing or you're doubling down it's like hey i think i'm gonna win so boom let's double the stakes like right and the, the person that's like, okay, I think I'm going to lose isn't going to try to do that at all. They're just like, but if they the, feel like they're going to lose. And if a person thinks they're going to lose, you can you can, you can concede, you can yeah. retreat. So if you see, say it's turn like four or five, whatever, or even turn six, and you feel you your opponent lose. snaps and you think you're going to lose, you just retreat and you only lose one cube because the doubling doesn't happen until the end of the end of that current turn so if right. you retreat before the end of that turn you just you lose your one and you move on basically yeah, yeah it's, it's or even earlier in the match like say like turn two turn three like i'll have a horrible round or like you had a bad draw or whatever or you had a location happen that totally screws you over and you can you can just back out and say like no okay this is yeah, yeah, yeah. not worth it basically right. right right i mean that makes sense it's like okay, so there's well... I don't want to be punished yeah. for that. The, for not strat knowing. Yeah, there's strategy in the in the snap mechanic. And people are also... I haven't seen this done too much, but there are people at least theorizing that, like, maybe at the higher level of play, like, some people might snap as a bluff. Like, in poker, be like, yeah, you're trying to bluff out your opponent. Like, maybe you don't really have anything, but you snap them and try and get them to back out, basically. Right. So... Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's an interesting way of looking at it too. That will that will likely happen at mid to high level. Low level, I think people are just gonna like do whatever yeah, when they're yeah 
when like, they're when they're winning, they're, they'll snap. When they're losing, they won't snap, or they'll they'll just, just back out immediately. Retreat. Yeah. Retreat. Yeah. Um, but I think at higher levels, people will change that up. I don't know. Anyway, it's it's an interesting game though. I think it's gonna do well. I I think it's gonna do extremely well. I don't know about Hearthstone killer kind of territory, but this is gonna do but, extremely well. Yeah, I don't think anything is a Hearthstone killer, but uh, yeah, I agree. I think the game. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's Marvel license. Marvel's popular. It's mobile. The games are really fast. Most of them are like under five minutes. Um, yep. There is a turn timer. I don't know what it is. It's probably between 30 seconds and a minute, but there's not an actual timer on it, so I don't know. There is, yeah, there is a timer. Actually. I've seen it. I haven't like seen it, but I've you could hear yeah. it. You can hear that timer. So I know there is one. I don't know what the time is, though. It's probably got... It's got to be short. It's like... I don't know. It's not that short. It's like it's at least thirty seconds. You get yeah. an okay, a decent amount of time. But like the first couple of turns, like there's not much on the like turn one, for example. Most of the time, all you can do is either do nothing if you don't have a one drop in your hand, or play a one drop, and that's yeah. it. Like that's about so. It. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I think this game has tons of potential. It, it's gonna yeah. do well. Like it's already playing well, mm. and it hasn't even fully released. I don't know. I, I can't see yeah. this failing at this point. It, it'd have to yeah. be something really bad <laughs> to fail. Yeah, I, I agree. It uh, it looks cool. This this caught me by surprise. Like when you posted about it, I was like, yeah, okay, another card game, whatever. I don't care. But then I like looked at it a little bit, and as I said, watched some streams. I'm like, okay, this this looks kind of fun actually, and it's. The, again seems relatively simple to play but there is definitely a decent amount of depth to the to the strategy and the deck building yep and again the games are really really quick like you can just hop in and out and like that is the yeah. first impression everyone had is like okay another mobile car game boring that's that was literally the first impression i think everybody had when it was first announced but number one team that's making it is good has experience number two good ip number three games do not look horrible everything else like that should be be like really well fine-tuned like the actual card art and everything else every, everything there was almost perfect i mm -hmm. i could not find like a serious flaw in that design i was like man this is looking way too good for like a this looks way too amazing for a beta um I was waiting for something to be like really bad or like a bad function in the game. I don't know, man. It's 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 pretty strong already out the gate. Yeah, I, I, no, think I agree. Going to do well. Um, I like it. I I uh, I signed up to to get in the beta. I, I mean, I probably won't because they ask you a bunch of questions about like if you play mobile games, and I mean, I guess I could have lied, but I didn't because I yeah, don't yeah. play mobile games. So I, who knows? They, they may want to get people like that, though. That's the thing. They may want to try and see, like, oh, can we get people that don't play mobile games to play this one? And, like, see what, what happens. Obviously, they want to, like, find mobile folks. But, like, if you can pull non-traditional mobile folks, like people who are used to it, and play to play this game, that's, like... Again, that's, like, Hearthstone territory. Like, Hearthstone was a game that could pull non-mobile players to mobile kind yeah. of kind of thing if it like if hearthstone wasn't pc i mean but i don't know that's like i think they there is probably some thought there they're like oh well we're getting a lot of non-mobile people interested that's like that's a really good sign too because that also means that maybe you should do a pc version so yeah i don't know for, for me i don't i think those questions yeah. are just to gauge like what audience is interested in this game yeah exactly and if it's everybody I then it's like oh my god that's that's enormous yeah. yeah as we said as we said already like when i first saw this again i was like oh another card game yeah. snore but it's yeah, different it enough pretty good it's, it's, it's different, different enough. enough it's interesting they've added some new things i heard one person compare it to artifact they're like yeah this is like artifact except it's <laughs> much except it's like way way sim it's like super dumbed down art artifact basically no i, di I didn't disagree. play artifact i don't really know artifact 
but Hard I guess disagree. They said, they, I guess they said that because of the three lane thing. I guess that's like the the one like thing that makes it simple yeah. Hard effect, I, but I, I have a hard disagree on that. I I don't think that at all. It's the only similarity to me is the lanes. That's it. But the thing is, like the lanes themselves have effects. Like Tessel, for example, lanes had effects. One lane was the normal lane. The other was the fog lane. Like that for me was was what I saw. I was like, okay, lanes have effects. Like Tessel did that. Mm -hmm. Even in like non-competitive modes of Tessel, like random, like single player modes, like lanes had effects and things like that. It, that was more what I saw. It was like, okay, there's something similar there. But but yeah, this is this is unique enough where it's it's like gonna stand out compared to other things, which is which is great too. Because you don't I don't want like an artifact. I don't care if it's similar. I don't want that, obviously. I don't want another Hearthstone. Yeah, I mean, we have we had enough of those. Artifact uh did not <laughs> Artifact did not make it very far. <laughs> artifact was a miserable fail. As somebody as somebody who purchased the game, I purchased Artifact for I mean like reasons at the time that weren't necessarily even like I wanted I thought I would enjoy it personally. Like it seemed like a big community that maybe there was something to. But that that game just fell right on its face immediately you you can't expect people to play like hour-long card games <laughs> every time yeah it's just not realistic um anyway uh any other thoughts on marvel snap besides what we've already discussed no i think uh i think that's good yeah this game uh this game really took me by surprise after you posted it because it looks uh it looks really fun i'm definitely yeah. interested in trying it and that's that's big for me because i haven't been interested in trying a card game since uh since hearthstone hearthstone yeah. is literally the last card game that i played uh, none of the other ones that have come out since then and there have been a lot have interested me in the slightest so yeah no I, i'm yeah. i'm genuinely surprised too as somebody who's i think maybe slightly more optimistic in card games this one took me by surprise also i was like oh this is way more interesting and different than I thought it would be. So I was I was really excited about that. Uh, and again, the the art the art by itself was selling me. That art yeah. is yeah, so good, super, super good. And really I'm not I like I like Marvel, but like I'm a casual fan of Marvel. I'm not like a super fan or even like, yeah. Right. Oh, you don't even have to be. Yeah. Like, yeah. Marvel's just... Marvel's cool. I don't dislike Marvel, Marvel, but I'm not in love with Marvel Marvel either. either so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you even need, like, the thing is you just don't need to be a fan of, like, specifically know all the characters. Like, if you know them, it's great. But if you don't, you're just like, okay, well, whatever. Like, it's a character in Marvel, but I'm playing, the, the, but it's a card game. So, like, that's more of the focus. Um, Anyway. Okay, let's let's move on. Um, Okay, maybe this is a short one. So, I don't even know how much the deal was worth, actually. But it was a lot. So... It was. It was like twelve billion. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I think it was between ten and fifteen billion. I don't exactly. Right. Oh, so yeah, there it is. I saw yeah, it so, seven. Uh, Take two acquired Zynga. Zynga is is more known for like uh, games like Farmville, so like Facebook games, social games. Like they were early Facebook games when those mm -hmm. were popular. Uh, mobile games. So Take Two bought a mobile game company. It's worth noting, like Zynga was extremely popular obviously in that Facebook era but has slowly been less popular. I'm I'm genuinely shocked that they got bought for this much. I, I didn't know they were this like they they came back this strongly cuz there was a time when I felt like Zynga was just like very in a very bad state like considering how they started with like Facebook games. So they they sold for 12 billion dollars. To, to take to um you know i have like 10 shares in zingo i'm sure i'll i'm sure i'm gonna make out like a bandit from this yeah for sure for sure i'm sure i am i'm sure i'm gonna get like 15 dollars off the 10 back. 15 dollars per share i think you I think i bought them for like 10 dollars they were like 10 dollars a share and i was like yeah i know of this company who cares whatever and i bought like i think like 10 shares of it so 100 bucks worth if I get like $150 back from that, I'm going to be freaking happy. Like, I don't even care. Yeah. But I thought it was worth noting because that $12 billion shocked me. That was shocking to me. That's a lot for 
for a mobile game company like that. I think EA bought a mobile game company called Glue, and it was not worth $12 billion. It was like a maybe a billion. It wasn't mm-hmm. nearly this much. It's a bit surprising. You know, Bethesda was sold for less than that. Yep. <laughs> Bethesda was sold for less than Zynga. That's that's funny to me. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this, but obviously Take-Two wants more mobile games. Yeah, obviously. I mean, I don't... I don't know what Zynga has done recently. Again, as you said, I knew I had heard of them before, but I didn't remember that they were the, the Farmville people. Yeah. Um, but that's the big one that I know. I don't know. I'm sure they've done more than that, but Farmville yeah. is, is, is the one that I know, and I know it was huge Like when it came out, and the Facebook games were a real big thing. But yeah, I, I don't know what they've done since then, and that was that was over 10 years ago. Yep. So. Yep. That was like, yeah, like 10, 12 Maybe more than yeah, that. I mean, I re- remember. Remember. Uh, yes. Our, oh yes, college. I remember yeah. one of the oh, yeah. roommates playing that yeah. at night oh, while man. people were trying to sleep and being like, "Why would you people do that?" Were, people were not happy. Yeah, that's just that. That's a that's a simple way to put it. That's a light light way of putting it. But Zing, they just make mobile games. Like I don't know if Zing is popular games either, besides uh, Farmville, but they make they make mobile games. Yep. They're just a mobile game company. So, okay. Anyway, uh, Warhammer video games are getting a summer showcase in June. Um, let's see what what uh, event will be streamed on Twitch. Uh, and Games Workshop has already confirmed updates for Warhammer 40k games, Dark Tide, Space Marine 2, Battle Sector, Total War, Warhammer 3, and Warhammer Vermintide. Warhammer Vermintide is still getting updates. The game's been out for a while. I'm surprised they're still updating that game. Didn't they make a second one? Isn't there a second yeah, one? the second one's been out for a while. Oh, okay. I'm I'm surprised. I, I wonder like if there's like a pretty big audience for that still. Well, it's definitely bigger than Babylon's Fall. Oh. Let me just I want to see the Steam charts. Any any game that has more than two players is bigger than Babylon's Fall. Vermintime still pulls like a couple thousand players concurrently. Wow, that's amazing. Like when there are I think I'm assuming some of these like spikes are when there's updates. You know when there's updates to this game, they go back to like 10k players. M- more up to 30k. Wow. That's amazing. This game obviously has uh tons of interest though. Vermintide. Yeah. But um the biggest um the total war Warhammer, like Warhammer 2 still pulls like its 30 day average is 8k. Oh yeah, I'm not surprised. Like Warhammer 2 has been out for like uh total that's total war Warhammer has been out for like five years yeah Warhammer 2 is actually doing better than Warhammer 3 right now um it's just because of that mode where you can like yeah play all those mortal mor- mortal empires more yeah more whatever I, I it's think called. I think if immortal empires which is gonna be the Warhammer 3 version of it is good then it'll people will swap over to Warhammer 3 yeah but you'd have to yeah. assume that yeah. people generally people didn't like like the the base campaign of total war warhammer 3 and mm. the game has like they improve some things but it also has a lot of issues apparently okay um so so updates yeah. are needed <laughs> updates, updates are, needed. are needed okay and yeah they, they did a roadmap recently for total war warhammer 3 and immortal empires isn't coming until like the fall i think like September oh, okay and this is, so probably talk about that during this what is this uh june, june 1st. 1st okay so, oh next week okay okay that's soon um i'm not like a super warhammer person like even their no. games like i played vermintide and couldn't play it because my computer rejected it um warhammer like total war warhammer is like pretty fun i just like yeah i just never got around to like completing a full campaign of it but like i didn't hate it or anything like that it takes a long time it takes a long time yeah really no it takes a long, long. time and I, but i didn't like I, I like enjoyed what I played. Like it was it was interesting. And it's definitely like it's definitely cool. But yeah, it's just it's just a lot. Like it's it's a long game when you actually try to finish a campaign. So um yeah. I my only thoughts are like Yeah. It's like Warhammer 3, maybe I never actually played it or anything like that. So I'd be interested to see when the Immortal End 
Immortal Empires comes out, but other than that, a lot of this other stuff I just don't follow. The only thing I, yeah. I remember is Space Marine 2 and going like StarCraft 3? StarCraft 4? Because mm. <laughs> the Space Marine one looked like a freaking StarCraft they, Marine. They released um, a new one recently. I think that's Dark Tide, which is the first one they list there, which is like an XCOM style um, okay. game. That game looked like pretty cool and people seem to like it generally from what i've seen mm, okay um, yeah i mean they're they've been i mean i feel like you know they've been cranking out warhammer games recently there's yeah. just a lot of them there's I a mean, lot i'm not i'm not a super warhammer fan either i'm not like i don't really know anything about the lore of the universe or anything like that but yeah yeah, yeah no they have a lot of games out right now so and I mean, the thing is next week, like next Wednesday, next Wednesday at yeah. 10 a.m. Pacific. Okay. So cool. Any, any other stuff? Nope. Okay. We get to talk about EA. EA wants to sell or merge. This was an interesting report. Yeah. I just want to say this. It's not happening. You're they're too big. And I, I say that confidently, but I mean, Activision Blizzard, you know, was acquired. Obviously, that's still pending a bit, but I, I, mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't see EA getting acquired or merged. I think if that had happened, it would, like depending on who who bought who bought EA specifically. I think if that happened, I'm I'm real certain the FTC would immediately go, okay, you guys got to stop. You guys got. Yeah. You guys got chill. We're, we're, we're getting to the point where we're see, like some of these mergers. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. But we're starting to get to the point, especially with the Activision Blizzard one, where I'm like, okay, we need to stop. Like, we're, you know, we don't want to get into the, you know, monopoly territory right. and like the lack of competition thing going on when you're starting to see these huge, huge publishers like Activision, EA, Ubi. I guess Ubi has said they Ubi don't want to be bought. They don't yep. want to be bought. Um, but EA saying so, yeah. they're looking to sell. Yeah, EA, EA. I'm. I'm not. I don't think that's happening. I, it would really depend on who's trying to buy them. If somebody from outside the game and games industry tried to buy EA, I think that's one thing. I don't know who that would be, but yeah. that's like one thing. But yeah, if it's like, this is an example. Okay, this is just an example. If like Microsoft came out tomorrow and said we bought EA. I am 100% certain everybody would be like, no, don't let that happen. That can't happen. <laughs> you yeah. can't do that. It's a little bit, a little bit too much. But who, who knows? I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure the board and shareholders are like, hey, look, we can get bought and we can parachute out of here with like billions of dollars. Yep. When we get bought, that's, that's awesome. That sounds nice. So that's 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 probably what they're that's the goal right there yeah i guess i mean hey if you if you see activision blizzard get bought and you see that all the big investors in activision blizzard the ones that hold like the most equity in the company like think about how much they made from that acquisition like yeah, right then and lot. there of course every single ea person in that same position got rock hard at that <laughs> lunch and said oh wait a minute we should, we should do that too wait a second we can do that too and still continue to make truckloads of money um of course they all did that but i i, I just don't think it's gonna happen I, ea is too big i think ea is too big and even activision like if ea got bought by somebody who had enough to do it if it's anybody within the realm of the games industry, somebody's going to tell them not to do it. Yeah. So. Obviously, they're going to look to sell or merge because there's a couple folks in there like, man, but $100 million is not enough as a net worth. I need to be at like $200 million. Mm -hmm. That's what they're thinking. Um. Oh, this is kind of a small one. Let's, let's make this one a small one, too. This is a Twitch one. Uh, Twitch added a feature where you can give an artist badge this was uh 
this was i think two weeks this was about a week a week and a half ago okay may 17th uh, this is great i like this this is like a nice this is a nice one i actually use this already you can give somebody in your chat mod vip um an artist badge it's really cool yep like good idea doesn't just like i don't know like if so like it said you when you click the emote and you give the artist badge to it i think it links to the actual twitch account of the artist which is great um i actually didn't know that at first but that's also really nice too that you can just click on the emote and immediately see the get to the artist's twitch channel so good feature twitch good job here's a thumbs up for you you mm -hmm. did it I don't know. This was this was a good one though. Yeah, it's you know it's not a big thing, but it's it's nice when uh Twitch implements little you know cool thing cool things like this. Yes. So yeah, good job Twitch. Good job. Little little clap for you. Yeah. Small Golf clap. clap. Good job. Golf clap. Good work. Oh, by the way, your Twitch friends are gone. Did you wave <laughs> bye bye to that? I know I did. Yeah. It's gone yep. now. No more Twitch friends. And no more status, too, as a result. So, in Twitch now, there's no status, really. There's no more status. So, mm -hmm. because there's no friends. So, like, you don't need a status anymore. So, there you go. So, that was, that was, uh, we talked about that before, but it's now officially gone. We can what shed is, a single yeah. tear for that. We talked about this last time but i like what's the point of removing that why can't they just leave it the way it is it like, was holding up a lot of development time yeah sure got it they to, needed the to be fair this. i'm i'm sure someone there was like look every time we push these changes we gotta test if friends work yeah maybe and, and that's like i guess that's like a lot like enough extra effort where like we're tired of testing if friends is working Let's just remove it, because only, like, X number of people are really using it. No, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. Ah, fuck it. Who fucking knows? Anyway. Twitch be Twitch sometimes, but this is a good one. This is a good one. Yep. Um, Konami is planning three Silent Hill titles. A Silent Hill 2 remake developed by Bloober Team. I, who is Bloober Team? Who's Bloober Team? I, I don't know them. Okay. I almost read that as boob boober team so boober team. yeah bloober team smaller silent hill title by annapurna interactive episodic short stories okay new mainline silent hill game from these are from konami by the way and six silent hill pachinko machines yeah i was just about to say that like oh they uh plan were planned to be revealed last year but Konami had a change of plans uh, around E3 2021. Also, uh, let's see, part of a style digital teaser game. I don't know. Yeah, I have like, so I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not a Silent Hill person. So I don't really have much to say yep. other than I have Me zero either. faith in Konami making video games. So, I mean, I. The only thing I can say is at least they are deciding to actually do something with their IPs as opposed to just let them sit on the shelf and, again, make pachinko machines or awful mobile games or NFT whatever projects. else out of them. Yeah, NFT projects. Can't so, forget those. But yeah, like, when's the last time Konami released an actual, like, full video, like a full release video game that wasn't, yeah, like, mobile or nft bullshit or something um, else like i just have no faith in, the, in in this like there's a lot of big silent hill fans out there so i don't want to like yeah. i don't want to downplay that i'm I, not yeah. one of them but i hope i hope for silent hill fans that uh that these are good yeah no and... I, I i do because yeah i know a lot of people want like konami to actually do stuff with their IPs instead of just having them sit on a shelf. So, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, it's it's good. On one hand, it's good that something's actually happened, but on the other, we know what Konami does right now. So, yeah, man. And even if they are good, I'm like, these are probably just going to be chock full of microtransactions and bullshit. I, like, that's what I expect. That's what I completely expect. I, I 100% expect that. I expect that mainline Silent Hill game to not necessarily even be a horror game. I expect it to be some microtransaction battle pass weird disaster. Who yeah. knows? That that like that is only getting made to then justify an NFT project. <laughs> that's what I that's what I expect at this point from Konami. That's from Konami. Like other people, you know, different. But Konami, like, I expect that shit. So, yeah, Konami's pretty crap. But I hope not. I hope they take it seriously. But you know they love pachinko machines. They do. They like pachinko machines. Um. Okay. Here's a PlayStation blog post. All new PlayStation Plus game lineup. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Demon Souls. Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. NBA 2K22. And more. Join the service. So PlayStation Plus is getting these wonderful titles and nba 2k22 um <laughs> i think that's great I, I don't really have anything else to say other than that's that's good it's always nice to get more um to get more titles that are available through these services like i, I don't i don't really see any negative from this is this the um can you scroll down a little bit in this article is this the one that like shows the actual like lineup of the games when they yeah mm -hmm. when they do the expanded uh playstation plus yeah their so... game pass whatever yeah i'm looking through it right now original so here's the via streaming versions ps3 versions i mean yeah i know people were pretty disappointed with the uh back uh the back catalog well let's look at the ps3 ones so here's the PS3 ones. Uh, the Infamous series is in here. Uh, Ico Demon Souls for PS3. Ratchet and Clank, some Ratchet and Clank games. Resistance 3. Ah, I don't know much about any of these other games. I'm sorry. Third Party Partners. Castlevania Lord Lords of Shadow 2. Uh, Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare. It's an interesting one. Cast our Devil May Cry collection. PlayStation Studios. Here's some... These are... Here's some PlayStation PSP. PSP game in here. What are these PlayStation games? What? Okay. PS4. Here's some PS4 games. Why are there from PlayStation Studios? Uh, uh. Gravity Rush 2, God of War, yeah, God of War, Uncharted. So these are some Uncharted series in here. Last of Us, uh, Shadow of Colossus, Returnal, Spider-Man. Like there, there are good, there are good games in here, in this catalog. Yeah. There are good games yeah, there. Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, let's see, God of War, Ghost of Shima, Director's Cut. We talked about Demon Souls, um, uh, Pizza Hut delivery game, um, Days Days Gone, no, Omega Days Gone, Omega Lol. Yeah, I mean, there's some good stuff in here. There is some good stuff in here. Mm -hmm. It's a decent third-party catalog too. I would say. Yeah. Pretty decent. I think, it's, I think it's all right. Guardians of the Galaxy got in there. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Tom Clancy's The Division, not to be confused with The Division 2, which the is... For, who, does anyone play the first one anymore? Uh, you, you got me there. I don't know. I'm sure there's like 500 people that play it. Um. Anyway, what happened to the rest of the article? It like... Okay. Um. Anyway, Spoon? I mean, this is great. I don't really have anything bad to say here. I, I know you said people were disappointed, but like, yeah, I mean, the catalog I I heard... is probably going to grow. So, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it will. I, I, yeah, I think I just heard some people were disappointed with, like, the classic catalog, like the yeah. PS1, PS2. Um... Uh, I could see that. I could see that. There was, like, there were not many games on there that maybe should have been, but you never yeah. know. That catalog could grow. Yeah, probably will. I, I have so, more yeah. I have more faith in PlayStation than Nintendo when it comes to that. Oh, for sure. So I think it'll get better with with some time. You know, they they just they're just launching this new version of this. I would say give it some time. Maybe within yep. you know maybe in a year it's going to be a, this like huge like catalog of PS1, PS2 games that people mm-hmm. can look through. But um. Anyway, Spoon, any other thoughts on this? Nope. Okay. Um, multiverses. Um, this is the um, Warner Brothers Smash Bros. game. I've seen some people playing this and enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't like dove deep into how people feel about it, but I mean, I think I think it's got just the right amount of like cartoony silliness to it. In a good way, like, yeah. I mean, it's free to. It seems like it's a free to play game, open beta coming to in July. They had a, a closed, or what was it, an alpha? They had an alpha here uh, recently, and I think it's still going on. Eh, yeah, cool. It's I mean it's free, so like, what's what's the harm in, in giving it a shot? And the game game looks kind of interesting, so yeah yeah no it looks um yeah it looks pretty cool they're they're focusing on 2v2 in this game from what i've seen of it played um Mm -hmm. all the matches i've seen are are 2v2 yep um and there are some characters that are just like kind of support characters so that those characters if you were to play 1v1 would not be very good probably right. yeah um, i mean the, yeah, I, yeah 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 the trailer shows like a lot of 2v2 so i i support that right there yeah the game is designed around 2v2 i think and from what i've seen in the game it's like basically um first to four ko's wins mm. so it's not like smash where if you play teams, which I don't know how there's not much of a competitive scene for teams in Smash, but um, you know, it's just like you would just play stock, right? Um, in this, like, basically one person can die four times, and it doesn't matter, right? Like, it's kind of like a, a, sh- a shared. Uh, it's a shared pool. Life pool, quote unquote. Yep. Because I mean, it's not really a life pool. It's just like the match. It's just like if one team gets four kills, the match ends. It doesn't matter who you kill. Sure. So, yeah. But I think that's a good way to do uh, do teams for a game like this. Right. Um, yeah. The game. The game looks looks pretty cool. There's like there's like fifteen characters in it or something. Mm-hmm start which that's not too bad um this trailer was pretty cool as a, as you said i think yeah. it's kind of the right amount of weird and wacky and cartoony um yeah from what i've seen people seem to think it looks looks pretty good has potential uh free to free to play game um so yeah you know i i yeah i think it's cool it's got a good style to it like it should be a little bit cartoony, so I, I I liked what I saw so far, and it's just like ridiculous, like Shaggy goes Super Saiyan kind of thing. It's like, mm-hmm. Okay, well, what is that? Whatever, it's just like a community meme, yeah, that was created yeah. and they yeah, put it in the game. Yeah, right? that started as like an internet meme, and they just put it in the game. They just put it in the game. It's like okay, yeah, do that. You just do that. You just that's the kind of stuff you need to do though, because people will recognize that and they'll they'll like want to try it. So I think it's 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 cool. It's a good idea. Uh, I hope it does well. It's uh, it looks pretty fun, from what I've seen at least the little bit I've seen. So, mm-hmm. uh, any other thoughts? 
not really. Yeah, I hope. Nope. As I, I agree, I hope it. I hope it does well as a. I mean, nothing's gonna dethrone Smash, but I hope it becomes a decent alternative who, for people who don't want to play Smash and for a game that has much better netcode than Smash. Yeah. So. Oh man, I'm Smash. Okay, uh, last on our list is Humankind. You had some, you had uh, posted uh, upcoming, or sorry, in progress, in uh, opt-in beta version will be available. So this was already happening, 19th to 30th. But after this, there'll be a Humankind update with some, I guess just, I don't know if I even want to say necessarily all quality of life, but various gameplay changes yeah. in there yeah some quality of life and some actual gameplay changes um yeah so the the, the couple of big ones in this are the the changes to war so the two things at the top the surrender system and the war support modifiers so uh in war war support changes are gonna depend on how the battle went to like how many losses each each side took mm -hmm. um and i guess it says also if you know you have yeah cultural so influence is going to matter a little bit more so if you're at war and you have cultural influence over the person's territories that you're warring on they're, they're going to take a war support penalty for that too okay um or the other way around um so instead of with battles instead of it just being a flat a flat bonus for like if you win the battle you get five and lose eh, or if you lose you lose five type thing now it's going to depend you know if you kill a ton of enemy units or if you lose a bunch of units i mean maybe there's a situation even where like you win a battle but you like lost so many units that you don't gain any war support or even lose war support even though you technically like won the battle but like right. you lost so many units in comparison to them i don't exactly know how that's gonna be balanced because it's not specific um and then the surrender surrender system you are not forced to end a war when a uh, war support reaches zero for the yep. losing side you can choose to continue the war if you want to continue to press your advantage or take more territory or cities um but you're gonna incur a stability penalty for that so that makes sense yeah that does make sense um, the other big one, as far as gameplay changes go, would be uh, each natural wonder is now going to have a unique, a unique gameplay effect. And I know you didn't like how vague that was. It's too, yeah, it's too vague, but yeah, but um, yeah, they're all gonna do, they're all gonna do something different as opposed to right now. I think they all just have kind of a flat like influence bonus or sure. and influence and stability bonus or something right now if you control yeah. natural wonder. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I saw one like the great blue hole has like, I think you get some flat science and then like science per researchers or something like that. So okay. it's like a science based one. Yeah, it's an extra like, science buff. Yep, makes yeah. sense. Can we talk about the other big one, which is gameplay effects of pollution can now be turned on and off because yeah. pollution doesn't matter or it does matter too much? Yeah, they, they've rebalanced it a little bit where, you know, pollution is less likely to ruin games because I know a lot of people at the very first beginning when it came out, like pollution would ruin their game. They've right. rebalanced it so that the thresholds aren't quite as high for the, the, the high levels of pollution that's going to ruin you. But yeah, for now, I guess they've added an option that you can just be like, yeah, turn off pollution. I don't, I don't, I want to build all my industry things in, uh, in the fifth and sixth era, all my, uh, yeah. you know, pollu pollution buildings to up all my yields without worrying about the yeah. negative effects. Um, yeah. And another one that I'm looking forward to as well is the seeing the unlock conditions of uh, of all the civics because I can tell you, I mean, I haven't played that much Humankind recently, but there are at least a handful of civics that I have never seen in all the games that I've played. Well, yeah, because you don't know what to do to get them. You're just yeah. like, okay, well, I don't know what to do, so maybe this will happen at some point. But yeah. Um, this is great. Just 
just show people how to do it <laughs> or toggle it on and off like if people don't know but like there are some that i'm sure other people also have experienced with, like i don't know how to unlock this and i'll never see it unless i know how to unlock it so yeah. i can you show me how to unlock it so i can see it yep i i yeah. don't yeah anyway um yeah game's getting still getting support uh this was on steam right can we see the steam charts or the steam charts are very good well, we have to look we have to look steam charts for humankind uh 2000 peak 1,123 average. It's not, it's not bad. It's not horrible. It's yeah. not Babylon's fall. So. No, yeah, you're, you're still getting like. You're still getting some. Or so. Well, actually didn't, like... didn't a DLC release in January? So there was a DLC in January. Right? Yeah. So it, it bumped up a little bit to 4K. Haven't had a significant DLC. Just some updates since then. So I think it. Oh, makes sense. Yeah, maybe they'll maybe we'll get another bump on the uh when this patch comes out, which is supposed to be sometime next month. Um The other the the one other thing about this game is the if you look at the uh they have the the uh review aggregate review score on steam is not very good it's mixed yeah um, yeah like yeah here's the this game's fundamental problem is always going to be one thing and i think you know the answer to it civ 6 exists yeah you still have to try and pull people away from it civ 6 average players Last 30 days. 37,000. By comparison. Yeah, I mean... It's... Civ is Civ. Is Civ like, you're Civ not is gonna... Civ, yeah. But that's the... I mean, that's... I, I, that's hard. I, you have to deal with Civ's existence and... Try and... Convince people to... Put that down and play this instead. That's tough. Yeah. There are things about humankind that I like much better than Civ 6, to be honest. Um, True. True statement. But still, humankind has to deal with it. Yep. But get a couple, maybe a few more DLC drops and we'll see. Maybe maybe get some more folks flocking, flocking over. But yeah, Civ, yeah, I mean, Civ's, it's just going to be there. And that's going to take that could take just take people away but yeah I'm, I'm just glad that they're doing more support i think you just i think you'd just be glad that they're continuing to support the game and yeah pump they're, they're doing they're doing what they said they were going to do which was continue to update the game make it better add add content they're doing another um they're doing a community event which starts i don't remember pretty soon i think within the mm -hmm. next week or so yep where we can unlock a, another culture. Um, but it, it's going to unlock eventually just yeah. for everyone, no matter for free. Yeah, and, sure. Um, of course. But yeah, they're, they're adding an, uh, another culture to the game. They didn't say which era it was going to be. It seemed like it might be like medieval or something like that, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, they're continuing to add content and update the game and make it better. I mean, I still think there are, some big changes that still need to happen that we talked about way back when like they've done a few minor adjustments to religion but i think that system needs an overhaul yep basically yep or at least there, there needs to be a way to earn fame from religion it just doesn't make sense that you can't earn any fame from religion it's just kind of silly right like Maybe there doesn't need to be a star category for it, but like those global deeds or whatever they're called, 
you should be able to earn fame like based on your religion sure so, and then po pollution needs an overhaul too which i mean they know that there's a reason they put in this disable pollution thing because they know people don't like it so that's a band-aid it's like yeah you can turn it off if you want yeah okay any other thoughts on this boo nope sir okay okay then uh the one thing that i brought up before which i wanted to bring up again now i'm bringing it up at the very end i looked at blizzard today and i noticed huh there's a diablo immortal tab that is going to get a pc open beta let me open it next week next yeah. thursday is a pc open beta or diablo immortal and you can pre-download it now so for all you Diablo Mortal fanboys and girls who have been salivating, waiting for this thing to come out, your time's come. We've waited patiently for four, three, four years for this been game. A while, yeah. yeah, it's been a while. You think that maybe Blizzard told um, whoever made it, I forgot their name, the chinese company that made it hey why don't you just why don't we just keep this on the download for a while and like maybe slow down your development for a bit so that we can let like all the bad pr like blow away in the wind yeah because we indeed do all have phones yeah and then they finally like were like hey you know maybe we should just do a pc release for this because you know that's what our fans play on mm -hmm. you, you think they you think they had a meeting about that and they concluded that probably yep because you can play on your phone, but there will be a PC open beta next week. So, I, Spoon, I've preloaded the game. I'm ready to go. I'm excited to... I'm excited. I know you're... I know you're just ready to go on this game, but... Next I'm week. For I'm waiting for Diablo 4, but, you know, okay. I know you're... I know you're just, like like yeah. your excitement you can't hold it in you've been counting chomping down. chomping at the bit exactly exactly but besides that that was the only other thing i wanted to mention is i i saw that in the the battle net client today that's the only reason why i i mentioned it at all um so let's move on from our game 